Hello CCF Philippines, hello CCF International, hello CCF Global. I am Pastor Danny Perez and I'm here as part of CCF International Church Planting, also known as ICP, a division of CCF Beyond. And as you know, CCF Beyond is the missions department of CCF. And I'm here to remind you that August is not only our anniversary month, but it is our missions month. What do we do during Missions Month? It's very obvious. We have to remind ourselves of our vision and mission and to check how we are doing against this mission and vision. So let me dive right into it. What's our vision? Our vision is to see a movement of millions of committed followers of the Lord Jesus Christ meeting in small groups, transforming lives, families, communities, and nations for the glory of God. It's a faith goal, but this can only happen if we pursue our mission faithfully. And our mission Consistent with the Great Commission is to honor God and make Christ-committed followers who will make Christ-committed followers. And this is at the heart of Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This morning, as ICP, I have three items to cover with you. Number one, how ICP is doing against our mission and vision. And number two, how are we faced by a great challenge that we should address? And number three, how can you help us to realize and overcome this great challenge? So let me go to my first point. How are we doing against our mission and vision? By God's grace, we're doing well, but it can be better. You know why? Because we zeroed in and focus on the CCF mission slogan, which is, every member a discipler. You see this? Every member a discipler. And yes, we have committed that every single one of the people that God sent to us will become a discipler. And that discipler should be very, very intentional, not only to disciple others, but to disciple the family. And for us to be able to do that, we have to come up with a very clear definition of a discipler. And, and this helped me personally, my wife and I, a lot, together with all of our leaders in ICP. So what is a discipler? A discipler is a Christ-committed follower who intentionally models Christ-likeness. And that Christ-likeness is described as saved, sanctified, holy, humble, obeying all, loving, and yielded to the Spirit. A discipler models this 24-7 daily as a lifestyle to all family first. And when that happens, the people that you model to will become saved and sanctified as well by God's grace and by God's abiding presence and power. And you know, I thought, personally, I thought I was a discipler. Uh, when I joined CCF, I was part of a small group. I was a member. I thought I was a discipler. And that went on for a long period of time. Uh, it was okay, but I didn't realize that um, I was not really a good, incredible witness. Because all I did was lead Bible study. I was teaching. I was facilitating. And I thought I was a discipler until um, we came up with a commitment to be able to grow uh, our D groups by really coming up with an approach that will really project our Christ-likeness. When we started to model, my wife and I, when we started to model Christ-likeness, this is when we experience real transformation. My wife and I um, agreed that we should really model um, Christ-likeness to each other, humility, obeying all. And every day, as we were uh, discipling other people, we asked ourselves whether we're doing this and applying this. And lo and behold, um, my wife and I changed. And all of the people that we're discipling also changed. We became credible witnesses. And that's part of the Bible. If uh, you are called by God to be a follower of Christ, and the reason for that is because God wants us to be witnesses. In Acts 1.8, it says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and even the remotest part of the earth. So, you know, when we became disciples, as defined, again, I will show you the definition. It says, modeling Christ-likeness. When we do this, 
a lot of transformation happened among ourselves and among the people that were discipling. Why? Because disciples are gospel witnesses. Witnesses and disciples are, are, are people who will attract other people who don't know the gospel to the gospel. The gospel of, of the gospel of salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, which, by the way, um, is the current series right now on the book of Romans. And I'd like to remind you that we just embodied this um, definition of discipler in every member a discipler and every, therefore, every family a discipleship group. I personally did this myself. When I uh, became a Christian, um, I tried to disciple my family, but you know, I failed. <laughs> the reason for that was because I, I was not really that credible yet because I was not intentional on what I should model to them. I just told them to attend Bible studies, but my life was not transformed. And I didn't realize that the only way that my life can be transformed is I become an intentional discipler modeling Christ-likeness. And so, um, again, the Acts 1-8 started to happen. We saw a lot of the people that God sent to us become disciples as we spent time with them. You know, the availability of the internet really made a difference. We were not uh, limited by time. We were not limited by space. We were not limited by distance. We were just discipling people from all over the world. And all we did was what? To model Christ-likeness to the people that were discipling. And those people that we were discipling were equally transformed. When we ask the husband to disciple the wife, model Christ-likeness, and for the wife to model Christ-likeness to the husband, there was a lot of transformation, a lot of good news. And as a result, many, many more couples were generated to the first, second, and third generation. And like I said, I personally saw that happen to my family. You know, Ifad, Ifad happened to me personally, even in the midst of this pandemic. I have what I call right now the Perez siblings Ifad. And you know, my brothers, my sisters from all over the world are now actually attending a discipleship group meeting with me every Sunday because we are all over the world and all of a sudden, God's presence really helped us. I just shared that with you because we were so imad and ifad focused. And you know what God did? God allowed our CCF disciple makers all over the world to see a plentiful harvest. And as a result of that, a lot of house churches and satellites were planted. And I am showing here to you a chart which shows how we have grown from the past to the present. And in this chart, you will see that before the pandemic, we were about 83 in total, 40 satellites and 43 house churches. But today, even after three years of pandemic, we have grown up to 93. And of course, this is a result of continuous IMAD and IFAD among our members. You know, uh, we started with just a couple in the pandemic, and they were very hesitant. They were based in um, uh, Skokie, Illinois, and um, uh, we discipled them, and we told them that, hey, even in this pandemic, you can do it. One couple, and then we discipled another couple, Edward and Sire. And you know, from these two couples, there was a fantastic, plentiful harvest that happened in the USA, East and Midwest. From these two couples, you already have this much people meeting in different states and they are celebrating. They grew from D groups to house churches and I'm pretty sure there will be satellites coming up from the East and Midwest. Let me show you graphically how the ICP, International Church Plants, looks like for you to get excited on how God is working through our EMAD, EFAD focus. This is where we are right now. In Canada, we have uh, 10 satellites and um, three house churches, and in the U.S., we have uh, three satellites and 15 house churches. I'd like you to see how the house churches are just multiplying. In Europe, we have four satellites and 18 house churches. My goodness, I cannot, I cannot imagine how this is possible without being disciples intentionally. In the Middle East, we have 17 satellites and five house churches and still growing. In Asia, um, where we were, the Philippines is outside of the Philippines, we have six satellites and five house churches. And down under, we continue to grow, okay? I talked to Pastor Ryan and he saw the beauty of Imad Ifad and there, now we have three satellites and five house churches there. Uh, brothers and sisters, we are so grateful for this. We are so happy with what's happening because we learn how to become true disciples based on 
a clear definition that we are supposed to be modeling Christ likeness to be great witnesses. Now, while grateful that God allowed ICP to be planted all over the world, we pray that we see more growth. What do you mean more growth? More growth towards the 25% revolution. What's a 25% revolution? The 25% revolution is a, is a research on behavior influence. It says 25% revolution. How big does a minority have to be to reshape society? We need 25% of the population to be able to influence the whole society. And that now is our challenge that I am presenting to you uh, that our ICP is facing. And this is where we need your support. What is our greatest challenge? Our greatest challenge is this. To continue growing towards a critical mass that will meet the 25% revolution principle. So that our disciples will be able to reshape the communities they're in for the gospel. You know, this really thrilled me. As, as, as I look at the 25% revolution, the picture of a condominium flashed in my mind. And I saw the 25% figure in that condominium. If only we can have 25% disciples in that condominium, we will be able to disciple that whole condominium. And then I saw it in schools. If only we have 25% disciples in schools, our schools can become disciples. And then progress that to a community and progress that to a city and to a nation. Brothers and sisters, CCF, reaching 25% is very possible with the plentiful harvest around the world. You know what's lacking? Workers. In Luke 10, verse 2, Jesus said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And you know what? The laborers are few because there are few disciples. Therefore, Jesus said, Beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers or disciples into the harvest. To realize this plentiful harvest, brothers and sisters, our disciples all over the world decided to bring Jesus into the community rather than just what we're doing right now, to bring uh, people outside into the church. We would like to add something very dynamic. We would like to create true life learning centers. I will repeat, true life learning centers. These are, these are centers in, in various places where our satellites are located right now. And what will they do? They will bring blessings to the community by offering true life lessons. Lessons on what? Lessons on marriage, lessons on money, lessons on, on depression, lessons on addiction, everything that will make people realize um, that they can only, the only solution that this world needs is Jesus. And in that True Life Learning Centers, we will bless them as we offer the key to true life to them. We will be a blessing to the community. And again, I will end with this. Through our True Life Learning Center and the plentiful harvest that this will bring, there will be more house churches and there will be more satellites across the world so that we will reach the 25% revolution. And brothers and sisters, my last point, you can help us. You can help us with this greatest challenge that we face right now by being with us, by praying, by connecting, and by giving. And so we challenge you, pray with us. Pray for CCF Beyond and what we're doing so that we will reach the 25% revolution. And you can also connect with us. If you feel like you can do something with us, connect with us. If you want to connect on international satellite somewhere or you have relatives somewhere, connect to realize our mission and vision. And then finally, um, if God touches your heart to give, support CCF beyond financially. Um, we have installation at the ground floor right now, at the lobby in CCF Maine, and you can visit our website to be able to participate. And I would like to thank you for spending this time with me. God bless.